Hey everyone, I uh, just want to do a quick demo video for you here to show off the new May Custom DCS6 fretless bass. Picked it up today. Behind me here you see my first May Custom I got back in March. Uh, it's also a DCS6, not a fretless as you can tell. It's a Bubinga body core, walnut top and back with flame maple intermediate layers, neck through design with the flame maple, Bubinga and purple heart stripes, and you'll see uh, the covers for both the knobs and pickups or purple heart top with flame maple sides, uh, neck goes all the way through on it, ebony fingerboard and purple heart tri triketra, however you want to pronounce it, trinity logo on there. Uh, got the red LED side dots. First thing that turned me on to Sean May and his craftsmanship, but this video today is about the fretless. Uh, like I said, I just picked it up and I'm using this as a feature for best base gear and their base of the week. Want to try and highlight Sean and some of the craftsmanship that he has. This fretless is great. I've only had it for a couple hours, but I'm in love, just like I was when I picked up the walnut base. Run through the specs real quick, let you hear the sound, and then give some shout outs where they're due. The base, as you can tell, really crazy wood top. This is a Buckeye Burl, but the difference is it's stabilized Buckeye. Stabilization occurs where they use a resin, um, the wood supplier, and inject the wood with this resin. Well, in the process, they mix some different dyes with the resin, and so that's how you get the crazy different colors. Buckeye inherently has yellow with maybe some green or brown, kind of grayish color, but it also has a lot of soft spots or kind of spongy, hard to work with, and very inconsistent. The stabilization makes it very uniform to work with, and in turn, give, makes it really nice to look at. I mean, Buckeye's already a gorgeous wood, then adding the color just kind of puts it over the top, in my opinion. Back of it, construction is mahogany body. Not really a real pretty tone wood, but it's a great tone wood. It's ideal for fretless, gives plenty of mid-range and warmth. I did the neck through design again. I love the figured maple neck. It's solid, it's pretty. I did the wenge uh, middle stripe, purple heart in there as well, because I mean, I like the maple and purple heart. And then Sean, the builder, recommended a yellow heart. Never heard of it, but he said it would probably go good with the inherent yellow of the Buckeye, and I fully agree. So he did the outside stripes in that, and then also did the control plates. This is the battery, 18 volt preamp. See, there's magnets inlaid in there, so if you need to change something on the fly, you don't have to worry about screws or anything like that. It's just all magnetic on there, which is a really cool design. Um, the other thing that Sean does, you'll see a third switch here. I'll get into the other two later. Same thing on this base, does LEDs on the side. For this base, I did a blue LEDs. Thought that would go good with some of the blue in the Purple Heart, or in the <laughs> Buckeye. But I knew that blue is also one of the brighter colors too. So you can turn those on and off with the switch as needed. I did red with this base to go with the Purple Heart and then blue to go with the Buckeye. Electronics, that's uh, all Nordstrom electronics. I've got uh, Nordstrom three band preamp. It's uh, volume, push, pull, active, passive, uh, blend control, passive tone control, mid range with push, push, pull contour, and then concentric stack, bass, and treble. The controls up here, the switches, both pickups, Nordstrom dual coil pickups, but they're set up for parallel. Middle position is single coil, jazz bass setup, and then bottom position is series, and both pickups have that control. So I'll dive in a little bit into the sound. First, two disclaimers on it, really. Um, a, brand new bass. I don't know it that well yet. It's a huge adjustment from my last fretless. It was a lot tighter string spacing, so I just got to get used to the feel of this bass. My playing is going to be crappy, so please forgive me. Um, the other is I don't really like brand new strings on a fretless. Fretless to me sounds better once they've had time to get broken in, warm up a little bit, but they are round wounds. I prefer nickel round wounds, get plenty of moi out of it. Yeah, it can eat into the fingerboard, but ebony's a strong wood, and I'll put some true oil gunstock finish on it to help protect it a little bit as well. So when we first dive in, I've got all the controls set uh, in the middle. Bass is at five, treble's at five, mid's at five. I've got the passive tone control all the way up. Blend right in the middle of the two. The jet single coils, I absolutely love on this bass, but it's an inherently darker sounding instrument. The Bubinga body core and the walnut just has a lot of low end, very dark sound. So I need the single coils to brighten it up. With this bass, it's very bright with the Buckeye and the mahogany, so I almost don't need just the single coils. So I'll use the passive tone control to tame it down a little. Bring that tone control down. So a lot more usable sound for me, not a lot of output. 
Go to the parallel setting, bring that tone control back up. A little higher output, a lot warmer sounding. So, a um, little more of the wah sound, more of the fretless sound I'm looking for. If I go up to series, it's too woolly for me, very thick sounding. with that tone control cranked, if I go back to the bridge pickup down in the series, I can almost get a nice Jocko tone out of it. He used single coils, of course, but it, it works for me. A lot of moi. And I mean, I can even switch that to the parallel and get the same idea, just not quite as thick. was either just the single coils if I'm doing a lot of slapping and then finger style work I would do a single coil in the bridge and then parallel up in the neck similar to like the stew ham washburn where it had single coil and then humbucker uh, this bass it's almost opposite of that I do I like the single coil up front give a little clarity to that neck pickup which can get really bass heavy but then in the back I do like the parallel setting so tone control is still up at 10 five on everything else and then blending up to the middle position here. I need to tune it. <laughs> this is more of a modern fretless sound to me, kind of like what I'd be using if I'm playing more like Vic, Victor Wooten kind of stuff. start to warm up. Um, turn off the signal here to the amp. Quick shout out to everyone. Um, first, Carrie Nordstrom, Nordstrom Electronics. I ended up winning their Show Me Your Nordstrom contest and got the free t-shirt. Uh, showed off this bass when I got it and then I told them that I'd show off this one as well. I love their electronics. When I first got this bass, I had Nordstrom pickups in it, but a different preamp didn't really work for me. Um, and the last shout out will kind of cover that too. But I just, I really like Nordstrom gear. I've used Bartolini in the past. A lot of my basses have Bartolini in it, nothing against them at all. Um, but for the sound I was going for out of these particular basses, the Nordstrom's great. Really opens up the palette tonally for the finger style stuff I want to do. If I want a jazz bass slapping sound, I've got plenty of basses for that. Stingray sound, they give me a new sound and that's what I was looking for. Um, quick shout out to Devin Klein, Devin Klein Knobs. He's the one person that Sean uses to help out because he just does incredible work with knobs. Um, right here is his work on this instrument, and then he also did the knobs on those. Check out his work online. He has some awesome marble looking knobs, doing lumen lay inlays on his knobs, so great work. Obvious shout out to Sean May. I When I got ready to build this base last year, I did a search for luthiers, talked to two or three of them. Once I talked to Sean, I knew he was the one the instrument. I love the shape of it. I like the looks. His craftsmanship was top notch looking at, at his page, everything he had to offer. Uh, but then talking to him, he was just easy to work with. I wasn't intimidated or he wasn't pushing me to a side. He was genuinely interested in my input and what I wanted out of the instrument, what tone I was looking for. I mean, it was a collaborative effort on both of these. He any option I wanted, he took care of. When I made the deposit, we went wood shopping together, and he showed me all the different walnut samples I had to choose from, and I could select right there through chatting online with him. I mean, that kind of customer service is really cool, um, and Sean's getting busier and busier, so now's a good chance to get one of his bases. 
Uh, everything, he does it by hand. It feels amazing. I mean, I've played six strings in the past. These are the best playing six strings I've played. He brings some of his other basses every time I see him and his four strings, five strings. They just have a great feel to him. Sean's a bass player himself, so he knows what feels natural and what feels good. Definitely, definitely check out MayCustomBasses.com. Find Sean on Facebook, hit him up, ask him some questions, and get your order in now because he is getting busy. The last shout out on this video, I was shooting this video for BestBassGear.com. I know they do their Bass of the Week uh, kind of feature, and I was hoping to have this bass featured in it, give a, some recognition to Sean, and just to sh share the instrument because I'm happy with it. Uh, big shout out at Best Bass Gear to Max. I've worked with him in the past on some of my other bases, electronics issues. I've had to send pickups back in and trade off for something else. He's always been very professional to work with, help me with anything I need. Uh, this bass, when I wasn't real happy with the preamp, it got sent back to him and we got the Nordstrom preamp and it turned out great. This bass, I told him that's what I wanted and that's where the electronics came from. Both of these came uh, electronics from Best Bass Gear. They ordered the stuff from Nordstrom and then they got it to Sean. So. Any electronics needs, hit up Max at Best Bass Gear. You're ready to upgrade your bass, maybe look into some Nordstrom pickups, want to get some knobs for it, check out Devin Klein. And if you're ready to take the plunge and have a world-class instrument built for you, Sean May at May Custom Bases. I couldn't be more pleased. Thanks.